it's always unfortunate when you see somebody with so much talent do something that impacts their ability to show that talent. And it's something that we see so often in the sports world. It's something, unfortunately, that we see so often, especially in football, uh, especially guys going into the draft. Like we've seen the likes of Joe Mixon, uh, the domestic abuse issue where he drops into the second round. We've seen Laramie Tunsil and the the weed gas mask the the day of literally during the draft that thing was posted on i think it was his twitter uh, he dropped from arguably the first overall pick to the miami dolphins taking him in early mid-ish range in the first round so we've seen a lot of things happen before guys were drafted but i don't think we've seen quite of the velocity the intensity that we've seen here now with, with jalen carter the interior defensive lineman from the university of georgia if it not for quarterbacks he would be the first overall pick. Like looking last year, uh, Trayvon Walker, Aiden Hutchinson, that conversation for the first overall pick, if it wasn't for Bryce Young and CJ Stroud, it's, I think, a, a formality that Jalen Carter would be the first overall pick. He's six foot three, six four, 310 pounds. Uh, he's in the top 1% in interior alignment, pass rush, pressures on the quarterback. He's in the top 2% uh, in the run game in all of college football. He He's quick. We'll see that on display because he is still going to be attending the uh the combine and we're going to see his athletic prowess on full force but as we all know by now uh and maybe some of you guys don't actually know but uh, wednesday night 11 30 turned himself into the police as he is connected to the incident which saw one university of georgia staff member a recruiter uh pass away pass away in a car crash uh the staffer's name is chandler lacroix as well as an offensive lineman at the university of georgia devin willock uh both died in a car crash uh, earlier this year, I think it was in January, uh, the issue or the incident, I believe it was January 15th. Uh, I want to get that right. I'm pretty sure. Yeah. January 15th, the incident was earlier this year. And uh, it was he was on the scene. So when, the, when we first found out he was on the scene, but his initial story was that he was a mile away, that, yes, they were driving together. But when the accident actually happened, that he was nowhere near. Uh, and he's he's also given. Uh, the police various reports that are just simply untrue. Uh, now we've found out that he was there. He was directly involved in the car accident. And now he fa faces some, some legal, some legal issues, uh, say least. Uh, he, he turned himself in last night, paid $4,000 bond to get out. So he's a free man right now. And he's preparing for the combine where he's going to speak. He's going to do all the drills. He's going to show why he is such an incredible athlete, but it is impossible to ignore the, again, the intensity of the issue at hand where he has an issue where the recklessly reckless driving, as well as the, whoever was driving the other car, he was in his Jeep. The two were in a Ford uh, LaCroix being and Willock, the, again, the recruiter and the offensive lineman. And one thing led to another, the Ford that the recruiter and the offensive lineman were in, as well as two other people that did get injured. Uh, the, the car flips, hits a curb flips, uh, and they hit a, uh, I think it was a light pole. And, you know, the two of them pass away. And now it begs the question, just looking at it from football sense, and I obviously don't want to undermine the in intensity of what actually happened, similar to the Henry Ruggs incident where, you know, is he ever going to play football again? Is just as football fans, as sports fans, that's just, unfortunately, that's just naturally the first question that comes to mind. What's going to happen with this guy as a football player? And then in, in the back, in the background, in the back side of our mind, we do still have to recognize oh, two people died. Like when when Kobe passed away in the in the helicopter crash, he wasn't the only one. There's other people involved. This accident, even though again our minds usually first go to football sense, what happens? Two people died. Two people lost their lives. Uh, two people were also seriously injured when had to go to the hospital. And now Jalen Carter, who involved in the incident, was driving another car, could be considered at fault for the accident is now going to be going through the judiciary process and we'll see what happens. I highly doubt he's going to face jail time. I think that's something unless there is proof, unless there is there was a camera, there's got there has to be some serious evidence for me to believe he's going to face any sort of jail time. Like with Alvin Kamara, uh he just pled not guilty today as well to his uh incident where he beat somebody up, he punched somebody in a Las Vegas nightclub. And that's something that's easier to prosecute. I don't think he's going to face any jail time, but I think it's easier to prosecute that because a he's on camera saying, I just punched that guy and there's eyewitness testimony. The guy lived. So he's going to be able to give his account with the, the exit accident with the car flipping. As far as I'm aware, there's no camera 
proof of anything happening. There's there's no evidence other than what we've seen and then what people are saying. And it is something that should be noted. He has lied to the police as to what he did. Would would it would have been better for him to tell the truth? Honestly, probably because then from this point on, we can believe him. And by we, obviously, what I think doesn't really matter. What matters is what the judiciary system thinks and what teams that are potentially going to draft him thinks. Because he is again, he's an incredibly talented player. Uh, six six sacks last season, eighty three total tackles, two forced fumbles. The dude is a wrecking ball. Again, top one percent in QB pressures from an interior defensive lineman. Top two percent in the defense and the run game as an interior uh, defensive lineman. Dude is a monster. He's six. He's six foot three, three hundred ten pounds, but he's quick. He's agile. He can move on his feet. He can move from side to side, from sideline to sideline, uh, and he can get in the in the backfield at ease. He is going to be a wrecking ball for whatever team is going to draft him and we've seen we've seen incidents not nearly as severe affect people's draft stock again laramie tunsil the weed video joe mixon hitting a girl um as far as even when michael sam announced that he was gay falls all the way to the seventh round nobody died in any of those instances somebody was seriously hurt in one of them with with and in, in serious i'm not even sure how serious it was i don't even know if there was any broken bones and that's not to undermine that situation at all but two people died with what happened here with jalen carter what he does have on his side is time recording this it's it's march the 2nd the draft is until april 27th so that's basically two full months away from the nfl draft there is time for him to set the story straight to get all his his ducks in a line and make this not go away but make the best out of the situation make everybody believe that he is has good character this is not who he is and it can kind of be forgotten out of mind out of sight by the time the draft rolls around he's two months to do that and what he did in the moment obviously was horrible and then lying to the cops obviously horrible but turning himself in last night and then posting bond that's the right next step you turn yourself in you don't don't hide don't shy away from the situation he presented himself to the police and now he's going to, we'll see what happens with that sense. But now it's just a wonder, where does he go? Where where does he end up being drafted? When does he end up being drafted? Uh, and there have been some some unnamed sources, quote unquote, because it's so hard to get people to speak on something like this, this, this serious matter. They don't want to attach their name to it. Um, but that means we do, we do get you know, some stuff from unnamed sources. Uh, and multiple unnamed sources have stated that they don't think in, Horrible term, horrible choice of words, horrible choice of words here, but they don't quote unquote, they don't think it's going to kill him. Come on, really couldn't show. And I, that's just me quote for quote for the article I read. They that they don't think it's going to kill him. Could have chose a lot better words there. In essence, they don't think this is going to affect his draft stock that much. He's certainly still gonna be drafted. I, I would put 98% certainty that he's still going to be a first-round pick unless other circumstances arise that make it more clear that, oh, this is really serious and he might face serious jail time. Unless anything like that pops up, still going to be a first-round pick. And I'm not saying it's right. I'm not saying this is what I would do as a GM. I'm just stating this is what I think is going to happen. I think he's still going to be a top-10 pick. He is that talented. And with football, we've seen time and time again, if you're good enough, you can almost get away with anything. Case in point, Deshaun Watson. Fully guaranteed 240 something million dollar contract after all those accusations. After, you know, legally speaking, he was he could got off on pretty much all of them, as far as I as I'm aware. But like allegedly, I don't think I'm actually gonna be sued, but you know, kind of have to say allegedly, come on. We know. This guy's really good. Jim Carter is incredible. He's been part of those two national championship teams for Georgia, one of the centerpieces for that team. Maybe would have even been the number one pick last year. This guy is just a monster in all sense of the word. He's strong. He's quick. He's agile. He's good on his feet. He's the perfect defensive lineman, theoretically, coming out of the draft. He's the best talent. He's the most talented player. Um, almost everybody consensus has him as the number one overall prospect. There's Bryce Young. There's Will Anderson. There's a few guys that eventually get close to the draft i'll talk about but with jalen carter such a talented kid such a talented kid and this is so obviously the word that is just so easy to use in the circumstance is unfortunate it's unfortunate for everybody involved obviously first and foremost the two people that died they'll never get to breathe again they'll never get to see their family again they'll never get to smile they never get to enjoy the company of their teammates again obviously first and foremost so unfortunate for them other two people that injured 
so unfortunate for them. But then you have this talented kid. We love football. I want to see the most talented people in the world playing on Sundays. I want to watch it. I want to enjoy it. I want that. I, I That's why I choose my money. That's why I choose my time. That's why I choose my content to be. It's like mostly football. And it's a shame when talented players cannot be on the field because they did something stupid. Jim Carter did something stupid. He's going to have, he's going to pay for it one way or another. He's already paid at the very least $4,000 to post bond. We'll see what happens again in the judiciary process and see what happens, how much he has to pay in that sense. And it's a question how much he's going to have to pay when it comes to the draft. I don't think it's going to be that much. I think it's still going to be a top 10 pick, but we'll just have to wait and see. <laughs>